The words of Sergei Lavrov, Putin's number one minister, the foreign minister of Russia, in his first and exclusive interview to India today has set the agenda. He has signaled that the second phase of Russia's combat operations in Ukraine are about to begin. And this has set the cat among the pigeons because as this military invasion gets set to mark its second month, here's Russia detailing what it plans to do next. India Today's world exclusive, Sergei Lavrov to Geeta Mohan. The biggest takeaway of the biggest war interview. After weeks of offensive bombardments and missile strikes, leaving Ukraine in ruins, its key cities on their knees, Kremlin is dramatically changing its strategy. For the very first time, Russia has explained what it intends to do next in its offensive in Ukraine. Giving a rare glimpse into its military strategy, often guarded behind a strict iron curtain. And this operation uh, will, will continue. It is beginning, uh, I mean, another stage of this operation is beginning. Uh, and I'm sure this will be uh, a very important moment of this entire special operation. And, what and the news trickling in from India today's Sergei Lavrov interview does not augur well for Ukraine. Lavrov also announced the beginning of the next stage of the special operation in Ukraine, putting an end to speculations. Russia for the very first time also made it clear that it will not return territories captured from Ukraine, even those outside Donbass which effectively means that Kharkiv and Sumy in the north, Zaporizhia, Kherson, Mykolaiv and Odessa in the south will be retained by Russia. They have been appointed now by Russia in Berdyansk and Melitopol and they are saying that they will hold referendum, that they are not going to go back to that's, Ukraine. That's the, that's the, uh, Is that the plan? Uh, at most democracy, oh. right? Referendum. So we are looking people's, at referendum. People's, people saying what they want. While Russia will not return the captured territory, it has decided to hold a referendum in the new regions now under its control. It means bifurcation of Ukraine, which will lose its access to the Sea of Azov and its naval bases. Lavrov also reiterated Russia's stand that Kremlin will focus on the Eastern Front after its strategic decision to move out of Kyiv. This uh, operation in the east of Ukraine uh, is uh, uh, aimed, as was announced from the very beginning, to fully liberate the Donetsk and Lugansk republics. And this operation uh, will, will continue. It is beginning, uh, I mean, another stage of this operation is beginning. Uh, and I'm sure this will be uh, a very important moment of this entire special operation. Russia has been negotiating on the future of rebel stronghold of Donetsk and Luhansk to enable it to break away from Ukraine, apart from tightening its control over Crimea. The fall of port city of Mariupol has given Russia the added advantage. The big takeaway from Sergei Lavrov's interview, not just the fact that Russia is going to ensure the Donbass region, that is Donetsk and Luhansk, remain independent, but also captured territories that are now under Russian control could be looking at a future referendum that they might not ever return to Ukraine. Ukraine is now looking at the possibility of losing more land. In Moscow, Gita Mohan for India Today. And here's a quick wrap of some of the other big highlights from this world exclusive interview. Listen very carefully because this was a one hour interview, longer than any interview that Sergei Lavrov has given to any media organization ever in the past. And this is the first interview since the military invasion of Ukraine began. Take a look at the other highlights from this interview. Russia is warning all its colleagues that just on our borders you have been creating a springboard against us. You have been pumping arms into Ukraine. Yeah. You have been totally ignoring the legislation of Ukraine which prohibited 
completely prohibited the Russian language. Mm. You have been ignoring legislation which have been uh, encouraging uh, neo-nazist ideology and practices, and the right. neo-nazist battalions which were, uh, you know, very much active against the territories uh, who proclaimed themselves independent uh, and who were promised special status. Uh, it's inside Ukraine. So and. Well, of course, the, the very latest development in, because it was all linked uh, uh, with Ukraine becoming NATO springboard and NATO expansion. And they were saying that Ukraine uh, will be in NATO. And nobody can stop Ukraine if it so wishes. And then President Zelensky said that he might think about coming back to possess nuclear weapons. And in November last year, my president uh, suggested to the United States and to NATO to sit down, uh, to cool off, and to discuss how we can agree on security guarantees without further expansion of NATO eastward. Right. They refused. Uh, and in the process, Ukrainian army um, radically intensified the shelling of those republics uh, in violation of all ceasefire agreements. And we didn't have any other choice uh, but to recognize them, to sign mutual assistance treaties with them, and in response to their request, to send uh, our troops as part of the special operation to protect their lives. And we've just shown you that India today is a channel that practices the gold standard of journalism. We've been reporting this war in the most professional and unbiased manner. We've been reporting from both within Ukraine as well as within Russia. And that's one of the reasons why the leadership of both Ukraine and the leadership of Russia both speak to India today. And Lavrov, Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister of Russia, has just spoken to India today for 60 minutes. He's taken all of our questions, including the hard questions that Russia must answer. Joining me now to react and to provide the other side a response to what the Russian foreign minister has said, we have with us Maria Lonova. She's a Ukrainian member of parliament. Maria, welcome. Thank you for your time and for being with us. Uh, I know this is about, you know, a country that you believe, uh, you know, has has destroyed your motherland. It's a country that you believe has, has imposed tyranny on your country. But I appreciate your time in giving us your side because it's important at a time like this, Maria, as you know, that both sides are taken into account. Here's the first, first sound bite from that interview, Maria, that I want you to listen to. This is about the Bucha massacre. It's something we've spoken about before, but here's what the Russian foreign minister has said. We have been targeting only military infrastructure. Unfortunately, the Ukrainian uh, army and so-called nationalist battalions, which are using uh, NACE insignia, swastika, uh, which was borrowed from Indian history but uh, twisted the wrong way, uh, and the insignias of uh, Waffen SS battalions, uh, these people were using and continue to use uh, civilians as a human shield. They were placing uh, the heavy weapons in the middle of the uh, towns and cities, next to schools, next to kindergartens, to hospitals. And uh, the internet uh, is, is full with the testimonies of the people uh, who were living in those places and who were asking these people not to do this. Unfortunately, uh, not, uh, not any, nobody in the West actually pays attention to the facts which we have been providing. Instead, they are staging uh, some uh, fake situations like a few couple of weeks ago in the place called Bucha, where the uh, Russian troops left uh, on the 30th of March, I think, and for three days the city was back in the hands of Ukrainian administration. The mayor of Bucha was publicly saying that we are back. The city is back to the normal life. And only on the fourth day, they started showing images of dozens of corpses lying in the street, uh, which was only a few days before shown as being back to normalcy.
Maria, would you like to respond to that? You've heard what the Russian foreign minister has just said. Has just said. Madhur. Because every word he said is a total lie and it's total propaganda. And actually, the first day when people came to Bucha and when it was liberated from Moscow army, there were a lot of international journalists who are showing everything live. And everyone knows, according to intel intelligence data, according to journalists, according to the uh, witnesses, that Moscow army was torturing, killing, raping, digging into the ground hundreds of people. And these people were killed only because they were Ukrainians. And unfortunately, if to analyze the Lavrov and, of course, Putin's speeches, he uh, encourages to do that. And recently, Putin uh, gave an additional award to the regiment who was torturing and killing people in Bucha. So we can see it as a regular Moscow Federation policy. Okay, let's play the second. You, you've answered, you, you've responded to the claim that the entire Bucha massacre was staged. Sophia, let me play out for you what the Russian foreign minister has just told India today about civilian targets now. Let's listen into that soundbite. And let's keep everyone on air. We have been targeting only military infrastructure. Unfortunately, the Ukrainian uh, army and so-called nationalist battalions, which are using uh, NACE insignia, swastika, uh, which was borrowed from Indian history but uh, twisted the wrong way, uh, and the insignias of uh, Waffen SS battalions, uh, these people were using and continue to use uh, civilians as a human shield. Sophia? Sophia, did you hear did you hear the Russian foreign minister on the issue of civilian targets? Would you like to respond to that? I can see only one Nazi country. This is the Moscow Federation. They invaded the territory of Ukraine. They started shellings. And they started killing of people who peacefully lived on our own territory. Yesterday, Moscow. Yesterday, Moscow army was shelling my native city of Lviv. They were shelling yesterday the hotel in which the refugees had their place. They shelled with a ballistic rocket missile the car, uh, the, the place to repair cars. Recently, when we talk about the suburbs of Kiev, Irpin, there were no military infrastructure at all. But everyone in the world, I think, have seen this destroyed multi-storied buildings where people used to live. They destroyed dozens of schools, dozens of kindergartens, hundreds of hospitals. They are attacking civilian infrastructure. They attacked the railway station in Kramatorsk, where people were trying to get away from the war zone. They were attacking exactly every place where there was a lot of people, just to make them much more scared, just to make panic, and just to influence the government and the president of Ukraine. I think that Moscow Federation has to pay for everything. And this uh, price should be not only measured by money. Moscow Federation should not exist at all as a Nazi, as a moderate country. Sophia, I'm going to play out the third comment from the Russian foreign minister. This is where he blames the West and NATO for pushing Russia to invade Ukraine. Maria is also with us. Listen in to the big third comment from the Russian foreign minister. Uh, yes, hello, and thank you for... Russia is warning all its colleagues that just on our borders, 
you have been creating a springboard against us. You have been pumping arms into Ukraine. Yeah. You have been totally ignoring the legislation of Ukraine, which prohibited, completely prohibited the Russian language. Yeah. You have been ignoring legislation which have been uh, encouraging uh, neo-nazist ideology and practices and the right. neo-nazist battalions which were uh, you know very much active against the territories uh, who proclaimed themselves independent uh, and who were promised special status uh, it's inside ukraine so and well, of course the, the very latest development in because it was all linked uh, uh, with ukraine becoming nato springboard and nato expansion and they were saying that ukraine uh, will be in nato nobody can stop ukraine if it's so vicious and then president zelensky said that he might think about coming back to possess nuclear weapons sofia would you like to answer that he says the nato has pushed ukraine into this war with russia he blames you the nato for what has happened once again i would like to emphasize Till 2014, when Moscow Federation invaded Ukraine, Ukraine was a neutral country who was never thinking about any military bloc. So Putin made Ukrainians to change their minds because of the invasion into Ukraine. We started to, to search for some uh, safe place to be, to safe community to be. And about Moscow language, about Moscow culture and uh, Moscow love to the Moscow Federation, no one did more for Ukrainians to hate everything connected with Moscow than Putin, his army and his invasion. Therefore, we do not want to have anything in common because Putin and Moscow Federation citizens and Moscow Federation armies, they killed thousands and thousands of Ukrainians because of their own mad ideas. No one was making a threat to Moscow, but they are spreading death everywhere they come. They have their own big territory. Why don't they make an order on their territory? Why the, they do not care about their own citizens, but they want to tell everyone what to do. But the problem is that now they are posing a threat not only to Ukraine, but to all the civilized countries. And Moscow is threatening with the usage of nuclear weapon against all the other countries who want to live in peace. And I think that first we should all recognize Moscow Federation to be a terrorist country. And second, to do everything to stop it. Because the only country that continues Nazi traditions, that kills people as a Nazi did, that is the worst possible, that acts in the worst possible way, this is only Moscow Federation. And not only Putin, not only Lavrov, unfortunately, all the country in general. Now I want you to hear, Sofia, what the Russian foreign minister has said about your president, President Volodymyr Zelensky. Here's what the Russian foreign minister has said. He says many things. And depends, that you depends, have used depends, depends on weapons. what he drinks or what he, or, or what he smokes. He says many things. President Zelensky came, came to power uh, with the promise of peace. Uh, and he said that he will reach peace uh, on the basis of the Minsk agreements. A few months later, he said he cannot implement the Minsk agreements uh, because the Minsk agreements uh, are not uh, uh, unimplementable. Sofia, he's, you know, obviously it's very personal because of the many things that have been said so far in this entire war. But uh, the Russian foreign minister is just asking, what is President Zelensky drinking or smoking? He keeps changing his mind. React to that. Respond to that. I think that Ukraine had always had a position to get peace. And the President Zelensky always was asking for peace negotiations. But no one in Ukraine is ready to ruin our own country 
and to refuse uh, about taking care of Ukrainian people in favor of Putin or some uh, crazy people as Lavrov is. We are a peaceful country and we do everything to preserve peace. But when a murderer and rapist is coming to my country, every person, every brick, every animal is going to resist. That's what we do for 55 days already, for eight years, and definitely we are grateful that the civilized countries, democratic countries, support Ukrainians in our wish to live in peaceful, democratic Ukrainian country. The f- Here's also one of the, you know, the, one of the most crucial things, Sophia, that has come out from uh, the things that Russia has been saying during this invasion has been talk of nuclear war. The Russian foreign minister, other leaders of the Russian government have been on record to say that the next war will be nuclear. They've put their nuclear arsenal on high alert. We asked the foreign minister of Russia about those comments and about the possibility of the use of nuclear weapons. Here's what he said. Interesting answer. Nuclear weapons. Will Russia ever use them, deploy them? Zelensky, we never mentioned about this. He mentioned this. So his uh, intelligence must have provided him with some news. I cannot comment something which uh, a not very adequate person pronounces. As a P5 member, as a nuclear power, will nuclear be an option at all? Is it on the table at all? Uh, When uh, the Soviet Union and the United States in 1987, Gorbachev and Reagan, uh, decided that they have special responsibility for peace on this planet. They signed a solemn declaration that there could be no winners in a nuclear war and therefore nuclear war must never be launched. Uh, after the Trump administration uh, came, came to office, we have been telling them because you know the, the, the tensions were aggravated uh, and we said why don't we try to send a positive political message to the to the entire universe and to reiterate what Gorbachev and Reagan pronounced they during all the, the, the four years of the administration they they refused to do so mm-hmm. but we were really encouraged when president biden was inaugurated uh, 5 days after his inauguration and we have repeated this, this uh, offer, uh, he first uh, agreed to extend the START treaty without any preconditions, uh, which the Trump administration was not ready to do. And in June, when, uh, in June 2021, when they met with uh, President Putin in Geneva, they issued this declaration. On our initiative, this declaration was issued. After the Americans and the Russians said that there must be no nuclear war, don't even think about it, we started to promote the same uh, commitment in the context of the P5. Not the United States, not UK, not France, Russia. And eventually, earlier this year, in January this year, the P5 uh, at the level of the presidents and heads of government issued the statement which we initiated and which we were pushing through for all these years. You know, Sophia, this is very interesting because, you know, Russia has been talking about nuclear war all this while. They've put their nuclear weapons on high alert. But the Russian foreign minister now says, we are the country who's been pushing for non-use of nuclear weapons. So this is just a fantasy for NATO and for Ukraine and for the Ukrainian president. There is no... There is no question of using nuclear weapons, is what he seems to be saying. Once again, I would like to underline that Lavrov is a professional liar and propagandist. And they are perverting everything that is being told in Ukraine, in the United States, in any other country, just to make the Moscow Federation to be looking like peaceful and very nice country. The fact is, that Moscow Federation already had launched more than 1,500 missiles, ballistic missiles on Ukraine. 
Have you heard about any missile Ukraine launched on the territory of Moscow Federation? None. And Moscow Federation is threatening with a nuclear weapon. Zelensky said that if there is no other possibility to protect my Ukraine, then maybe it's worse to get back to nuclear weapon. But that was a question of despair because we have no possibility to protect our country against nuclear weapon from Moscow Federation, against ballistic missiles. And he was asking that in a context whether any country in the world can help Ukraine to close the sky to protect civilians. But you have to remember one very important point. In 1994, Ukraine deliberately refused of the possessing of nuclear weapon, though it was the third largest arsenal in the world. Three countries, the United States, yeah. United Kingdom, and Moscow Federation, became the guarantees of Ukrainian security. And in 2014, one of the guarantees, Moscow Federation, just started an open war against Ukraine. It had to guarantee our territorial integrity and sovereignty. But Moscow decided to attack Ukraine, to infringe our territorial integrity, to steal our territory, to kill our people. How can we trust this country? They are killing more and more. They killed and people in Georgia. They killed people in Syria. They killed people in Transnistria. They are killing people in Ukraine right now. And Sophia, and you know, one of the comments, one of the comments that has come in from the Russian foreign minister that has been quoted in the world media, quoting India today, is that he says the second phase of this special operation is about to begin. Various interpretations of that. I want to bring in Maria Lonova also in. Uh, Maria, I think I hope we've been able to correct that link with you. We couldn't uh, hear you earlier, but Maria. Maria, your reactions to what yes. the Russian foreign minister has said about the possibility of bifurcation of Ukraine, about the possibility of not returning the territories that have been taken over in, in the east, and the second phase of this war. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that Lavrov and Putin, that's the best example of Goebbels' uh, uh, policy. Uh, especially when they're lying. Uh, Safiya is absolutely right, because just to remind that starting from 2014, Russians killed uh, around 15,000 Ukrainian citizens already. And started from 24th of February, they have already killed, tortured uh, um, more also dozen southern civilians. And unfortunately, of course, we do not know still the exact number because uh, we do not have access to occupied territory and to blocked uh, citizen towns, such as Mariupol. As you know, what is going on now with Mariupol and uh, also what is going on in Ukraine now, it's a genocide. And we have, it's a genocide, and we have recognized it and made an addressing from the parliament of Ukraine. And I'd like to say that when Lavrov was, uh, uh, you know, mentioned all this um, lies uh, regarding Bucha, you know, we have visited Bucha together with a lot of European politicians and we have listened um, we have we have listened to people, just regular people who has, you know, who saw this Russian uh, uh, soldiers. We right. saw this, uh, uh, you know, all these atrocities when the swastika, Nazi symbols were on the backs of uh, killed people. That is why uh, let, uh, let Lavrov say this, sorry, liar to a mother of raped eight years old girl or to a boy which was 11 years old and he was raped by Russian soldiers. That is why Russia Federation is a state okay. terrorist. Maria state. and Sofia, thank you very much for your time. I know this was difficult, but uh, you know, you've, you've responded to a special request from us because uh, you know, we do cover both sides of this war. So it's very important for us to put out what the Russian minister has said, but to also get that reaction from the Ukrainian side. So I thank the both of you for giving us your time and being with us on this okay. special broadcast here on India Today.